Tell us about your character. What do you want to know about my character? Everything. All the things. Everything. All, Everything. all, all the nitty gritty. Like Thank you. Very important. Um, so I play I play Jake, who's uh, a police officer. And in in our first episode, we see as the cord comes down, um, Jake's just in the wrong place at the exact right time, and so he gets stuck inside. And this is a guy who's sort of introverted and guarded and, and shirks responsibility and would rather follow than lead. But unfortunately, with his relationship with his best friend Lex, who was on the outside of the he's sort of pushed into a, uh, a position where he needs to step up and be the leader inside. And it's not at all what he wants to do. And uh, you, you see him sort of at war with himself, protecting himself and being the hero that everyone needs. And uh, that's sort of his, his journey throughout the season. Stepping up into this extraordinary, very ordinary, sort of unwilling person. Yeah. Who do you interact with the um, I mean, I, I actually have the most diversified work schedule of our whole cast because my character inside sort of travels around and I'm, I'm sort of trying to enforce any any sort of control and I get these jobs so I have to travel and so I work with uh, with Kristen and George uh, as Dr. Cannons and, and Katie in the hospital and then uh, I travel outside I talk to, to Lex, talk to David's character um, frequently and then um, you know, when we're on the street, there's, there's Jana's character is inside, and so there's always places where people can cross paths, whether it's outside or inside their locations. And uh, I sort of, I think I'm the only cast member who's worked with pretty much everybody now. Um, but obviously, those outside and inside aren't crossing, so there's always a limit to how many people we can work with. But, uh, but yeah, mostly with um, the characters of Katie and. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess uh, Dr. King. So how is Jake different from anyone you've ever played before? Uh, he's a good guy. Okay. Which is different from my most recent <laughs> other television appearances. Um, yeah, no, he's he's truly good. And he's, um, you know, contrary to some of the other roles I've played more recently, he's very introverted. Um, and he's someone who doesn't often say how he actually feels or what he actually wants. He's more prone to... Um, to bottle things up and hold it all in. And so you see a guy who's very conflicted. We don't necessarily know where it comes from in the story. We know we can see that there's backstory and that there's reasons that this guy you know, has a temper and is kind of closed off to, to opening up to people and all of that. And we know that there's reasons and we get little tidbits here and there, but the main, the main thing is that he's just, uh, he's just someone who's very guarded and kind of hardened by life. Um, and that's a little different for me. And he's, uh, you know, he's got a different maturity than some of my other characters that I've played recently. Um, he's just sort of been through it in this situation, obviously. Anybody who would go through that is going to rapidly become someone else because it's just um, an extraordinary situation. So that's sort of, yeah, the main thing that's different. <laughs> I have a fun question. Yeah. If your character had a superpower, what would it be? Mm. Everybody gets stumped on this question. No, it's good though. <laughs> yeah. Because he could definitely use a superpower. <laughs> um, mm. I think the most useful would probably be flying. Any any bad any hairy situation, because the virus is spread through contact, right, and fluids. So any situation where you encounter something, you can just fly out and you're gone, you're safe in the air. And you could fly over the court and escape. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd probably fly. Fly? Okay, gotcha. I'm gonna know uh, right off the bat how everything came to be, or just something we're gonna learn along the way. Um, how the virus broke out. Uh, that's part of the, the progression of the story, is learning the origin of the virus and how it got into um, Atlanta and why it's broken out at this time. In the pilot, it's, um, it's sort of suggested that um, it could be some form of terrorism. And that sort of seed planted, and then the, so that story evolves, and they sort of look into that more, try to figure out the source of it. Because um, finding the source might help find a vaccine. Um, or a cure, and I think 
that sort of becomes an important part for some of the characters, is getting to the bottom of like, what is this and where did it get it. Um, so yeah, that definitely plays my role. Yeah. So some people have seen the pilot, and you're starting to come to more of these conventions. You're in San Diego. Yeah, yeah. What has the the fan reception been like so far? Uh, so far, really great. So far, um, the reactions that we've heard is that people are intense is always a word used, which we tend to agree with. I mean, our, our work it's kind of amazing. Our our shooting during the day is just scene after scene of just. I mean, it's lighthearted in places, but it's this, the circumstances are so grave and so heavy. I mean, everyone is at risk of dying at every moment in a very real way that's unlike uh, the Vampire Diaries where you're living in a, in a fantasy where the sort of, they're supernatural creatures, some can't die, some are sort of exposed to death in a different way. These characters have never been around or exposed to that kind of thing. And so this is very new to them, and so it, it, they carry the weight of the world on their shoulders in some ways. We also see very quickly within a few days how these people try to restore equilibrium for themselves because they can't just sit back and be fearful of what's happening and just hide out and not act. They still have to live their lives and find a way to act and to survive and find food and shelter and all of that. And so it, it, you find that they find a new life, a new speed inside. Um, and that's definitely it. Um, that's a great thing to play with. But the, the fans have sort of responded to the relationships more than anything. Um, that's the main thing that I've heard is that people, by the end of the pilot, even just already dropped into these people's lives and are wanting to see more about more how the, the new relationships develop and find out more about why these relationships are the way they are, the existing friendships. Um, and ultimately, that's what the show's about. It's not about a virus, it's about um, these people. Yeah. It's about these ordinary people in an extraordinary circumstance that are being forced into positions that is not familiar or, um, or wanted. And so, it's normal people sort of becoming heroes. And I think people connect to that because it's stripped down and it's, it makes you sort of like the, the Walking Dead would do, where you go, know, How would I respond in a zombie apocalypse? Except this is real. And if a virus like this did break out and people were stuck in this situation, it's hard to not put yourself into these, these situations and sort of feel with these people. Um, so I think that's why people have the best one. You think it's going to take the network in a new direction or open up yeah, I mean, a demographic? That's, for definitely, that's, def that's definitely a goal, you know? And for us, it's just trying to make something that speaks and something that, um, you know, is its own voice and not trying to appeal to a certain form or or audience, and the, the network's been very brave in, in doing something that's so polarizingly different from um, their other fair. And, but also taps into the same, you know, people, people like stories about heroes, and that's why we have so many superhero shows that do well, is because it's exciting to watch that. And seeing normal people having to sort of become that is, is a similar experience, I think, for viewers. So I think it's the same fan base as we engage, but, um, it's definitely a more mature show. It's it's a it's it's a bit less um, less stylized and more gritty. It's sort of right inside of the action. Yeah. How do you? Do you have a favorite Cena episode? <clears throat> oh God. There's, it, honestly, the, we we are so lucky um, to be working on this show because every script we get is just so electrifying to read. We as the cast, we just got episode 11, we're that far down the line of the season, we just got it yesterday. I mean, our cast texting each other and reading it, and everyone just responding and saying, oh my God, wait till you see this, wait till you see that. It's just all very, we're so grateful for these stories. And it's really hard to, <laughs> to look back and pick like, what, what the best part is, because it's all so, so rich. And there's so much that happens. Um, but I, I mean, it all, it's all a forward momentum building to the end of the season. It's very, it's very much a linear story in its timeline. When we finally catch up to the day that we tease the pilot and see how all those pieces have come together to show us that chaos that we get to see. Um, so it's almost a very rewarding experience because we've seen how these people's stories start to interweave and how people cross paths. Um, it's hard to pick a moment. It's my favorite. But uh, 
but the end of the season, the last few episodes all together are just so there's so much heart behind it because what is watch these people go through by the time we get to that sort of the crux of the story um, you just sort of see everything all these people's real emotions coming out and it's, uh, it's really beautiful do you, do you know how it's going to end? Have they told you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> two more scripts, right? Yeah, okay. two more scripts. Yeah.